Survival games, they're a broad genre, but one that always brings plenty of challenge and things to worry about. There's quite a lot of survival games and games with strong survival elements in 2023. We've got 10 new and upcoming games to talk about today, so let's get started off with number 10. Road to Vostok is an interesting one because it's got a little bit of a different spin on the formula. So in it, it's first person shooter, of course, but it's got a little bit of a dash of Cormac McCarthy's The Road to it. It's in a post apocalyptic setting and you are on a journey. You're kind of stuck in this end of the world border zone between Finland and Russia. And it's your job to fight, hunt, shoot, scavenge and survive and get across this kind of no man's land post apocalyptic zone and cross the border safely. The game's all about survival, of course, uh, in terms of dealing with the environment, dealing with hostile enemies, enemies everywhere, sneaking around them, trying to scavenge, craft your own weapons, even build out your own temporary shelters. And the way the game is structured is that apparently as you get closer to the border, the game is going to get more challenging. The shelters that you survive in seem pretty cool looking. The inventory we've seen so far seems well organized, and we just really like the idea behind this one. As of right now, it doesn't technically have a release date, and this one does seem like it's from a very small developer. We can't find too much on them, but we're keeping our eye on this one and we hope it releases soon. Now, next over at number nine, sticking with the theme of hoping it releases soon, of course, we have State of Decay 3. Undead Labs has been cooking on this one for a while, working on this one for quite some time, and we've been looking forward to it because the State of Decay games are just really good zombie survival game concepts. But we still don't think that potential has fully been realized, and a third game could really knock it out of the park. We're still waiting with bated breath, though. All we have is this teaser trailer, where it's like in the snow, so maybe a winter theme, and zombie animals that maybe you have to deal with, that is literally all we have to go on. We've been waiting for updates for this game for so long, and this one is a bit of a long shot for 2023, but hey, it could release as a surprise towards the end of the year. Who knows? Still, we definitely think after the updates and everything with State of Decay 2 and then the gap between now and then, it, it is definitely time for a new one. Next over at number eight, we have The Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. Now, this definitely seems like the kind of Lord of the Rings game that should have already existed. The idea is brilliant. You play as a group of dwarves who return to Moria to reclaim it from all the evil that's taken over and all the tragedy. Now, in typical dwarf fashion, you're mining for resources, but then you're using those resources to craft new and better gear, as well as excavate and rebuild Moria as you go with some good old fashioned base building. In particular, the base building seems cool because it's not like Valheim where you're building in a big open space. Here, you're building in more condensed, confined spaces, you know, the mines, which could lead to some really fun and interesting building and also gameplay and combat survival scenarios because you're hunting and fighting off hordes of orcs and other weird creatures that are creeping around in the dark. And of course, it's something that you can play cooperatively, which is brilliant. And we're looking forward to seeing how this one really pans out when it releases this fall. Next over at number seven, we have another post-apocalyptic survival game uh, called Rooted. This one is first and third person post-apocalyptic survival. You can play it completely solo or with friends. And of course you're running around scavenging through abandoned buildings to find supplies to survive and fight. Sounds very typical, you know, survival game stuff, of course, but it is worth pointing out that this one is developed in Unreal Engine 5. So from what we've seen so far, it's pretty gorgeous looking. This is another one from a small studio, but we're hoping that they can really take advantage of Unreal Engine 5 to make some really cool looking environments. So far, the early stuff shows promise and we're hoping we see more of it this year because we wanna know what the deal is with this one. Like, what's the other spin? Everything we've read, everything we've seen about it so far, the Steam page describes a pretty standard survival game, but they gotta have some creative spin to it and we're looking forward to seeing what they have cooked up. And to be totally transparent, this is another one where there's not too much on it yet and a lot of really good sounding stuff on paper, but whether it turns out good or bad, from what we've seen so far, it, it's at least worth keeping one eye on. Next over at number six, we have Stranded Alien Dawn. This released in the spring and people are absolutely loving it. This is a survival game with a space spin to it. Essentially, you're like an astronaut, a ship crew, scientists who are stranded on an alien planet. So it's about survival and saving your crew members, but on a hostile, strange alien planet, which is the, a perfect idea for this type of gameplay. It's not just a running and gunning type game either. You're, you're building shelters, you're using science and technology 
technology, you're researching stuff to grow, you're managing the other survivors, like the food levels, happiness, and stuff like that. And you're dealing with, like I said, a hostile alien planet that you don't understand. Typical things that you would do in other survival games maybe don't work out the same way because this planet is totally different flora and fauna that you need to stumble upon, discover, and, and really learn for yourself. It's all about threat assessment and science. Like we said, people are loving it so far. It's pretty in-depth. It's got a good look to it, a really nice color palette, and just cool, weird alien creatures. And you can build some pretty cool bases with your survivors, so consider checking out Stranded Alien Dawn. Next over at number five, we have Frostpunk 2. This is a survival game, but definitely a, a different type because it is a bit more of a top-down city builder style game, but we're including Frostpunk 2 because the first Frostpunk, if that was any indication, man, this is a survival game through and through because it's like every decision is incredibly challenging, resources are limited, and the game absolutely brutalizes you with every single decision you need to make. Do you power your city to keep people warm as the cold comes in? Well, there's always gonna be another negative side effect to that, basically everything you do. So it's all a really, really challenging and stressful balancing act. Now, with Frostpunk 2 coming this year, it seems like there's gonna be more resources to fight over, including oil, which has been teased. And we're just really excited because we love the first one a lot. It's not for everybody because it is so brutally challenging, but in terms of survival, you are absolutely brutally fighting for survival in these games, so that's why we're including it on this survival game list. Next over at number four, we have a game called Once Human. This is an open world, post-apocalyptic survival game that's got a really good spin on it. This is like a post-apocalyptic world, abandoned buildings, abandoned cars, overgrown buildings and stuff like that. But this is apparently a world that was taken over and completely infected by an alien creature called Stardust. So everybody, every creature, everything is kind of like this weird meta version of itself because it's infected by the Stardust. And the game is about surviving that infection while also maybe using it to your advantage in some ways and fighting off other things infected by it, be it animals, people, what have you. This is multiplayer, but you can play it solo. And while you're crafting and customizing weapons and shooting stuff and doing the regular video game stuff, you're also worrying about food, water, and how much those are polluted with stardust and, and just other crap, and how much that's going to affect your health and sanity meters. So there's a lot to manage. Between that, the first person shooting, and the actual mystery of this weird alien stardust thing, it seems like they might be onto something with Once Human. Uh, we're expecting to hear more about it soon. Next over at number three, we have a game we've mentioned on a few lists. It's called Outbreak Island. This one is seemingly releasing at some point in 2023, and it's a good old fashioned base builder where you build during the day and fight off hordes of zombies that are activated at night. It's an open world sandbox with plenty of weapons, gore, destruction, and it's actually a pretty good looking. You're gonna be scavenging for supplies, bringing them back to your base, desperately building it up before the hordes of zombies show up. Uh, you're gonna be using vehicles to get around and raid abandoned buildings in this sandbox world. It's an open world of apparently 20 square kilometers filled with supplies for you to take advantage of and fight off these ruthless zombies. It just seems really cool, even if the concept doesn't reinvent the wheel. It just seems like a solid and promising one. Next over at number two, we have Dune Awakening. This is an open world survival MMO. So a bunch of people are gonna be playing in the world of Dune on Arrakis with a bunch of other players. And still to this day, we don't know too much about it, but we've gotten little glimpses here and there. And we're just excited at the concept of playing in the world of Dune because it's really cool. From the lore to the science, to the vehicles and weapons. Everything about it just seemed prime for a game, especially, and a survival game, sure, we'll give it a shot. We've seen sandworms, creatures, warfare, open marketplaces, vehicles to travel around in, and it's being developed by Funcom, who also worked on Conan Exile. So they know what they're doing in terms of these big, ambitious, multiplayer sandbox survival games. They've been working on this one for a while. Apparently the world is going to transform as you play and we're really hoping we get our hands on it this year. Now down to number one, of course, we have Sons of the Forest. Sons of the Forest released earlier this year and although it's an early access, it's a promising start. 
people really like it. So in this game, compared to the first one, you're actually playing as a member of like a search and rescue team that is looking for a missing billionaire. And then you crash and you're stranded on an island and you have to do your survival thing and there's horrifying monsters and weird stuff. And it's perfect. It's, it's just really cool and weird and strange. There wasn't really anything like the first Forest game and Sons of the Forest definitely keeps that going. It's not the longest experience right now, but it is pretty compelling. There's building, there's a quirky NPC, there's some creepy caves, and we're excited to see where this game goes because it was pretty much a success when it kicked off, so we're hoping that they really ramp up, taking in player feedback and adding more cool stuff to the game. It's a really solid first start. We did it before you buy on it if you want to check that out, but yeah, Sons of the Forest is a solid survival game. Those are some new and upcoming survival games, but of course we got a couple of bonus ones we want to mention that we couldn't fit in the main list. The first, this one is awesome, believe it or not, The Cult of the Lamb and Don't Starve Together are having a collab. They're coming together with Cult of the Lamb getting a new game mode that's completely just straight up inspired by Don't Starve Together. It's got the art, it's got the characters, and you're gonna be worrying a lot more about food for your followers now, as well as unlocking and getting cool stuff that ties into Don't Starve. It just absolutely makes perfect sense because Cult of the Lamb, while not really a survival game, definitely has some fun elements here and there, but don't starve at this point and don't starve together, of course, just absolutely legendary, quirky, creative survival game. So for them to come together like this in a fun little update is cool. Also, Wanderlost. This is a top-down, more indie retro-style survival game where you're exploring this zombie-infested world uh, with a bunch of different biomes, and you're mining, you're harvesting, you're chopping trees down to build up shelters and fight off hostile creatures. But there's an air of mystery to this world. Even though it's all colorful and cute, there's a lot to it, as well as just some engaging little on-screen pop-ups and kind of quick-time events that simulate doing certain crafting things. It seems really cool and creative and just an indie survival game worth keeping an eye on. And next up, Ascent of Ashes. This is slated for the end of the year, and this is about simulating a colony. This one is more combat focused, but there's still survival elements and base building and stuff like that, but it's actually got real time with pause combat. That just seems like a really cool fit for this weird post-apocalyptic also survival kind of world where you're almost kind of like dealing with combine style soldiers from Half-Life. They're onto something with this one, and we're curious to see how it turns out. But like we said, those are some survival games for 2023 that we wanted to highlight today. So let us know what you think in the comments. If you got any other games to talk about, we'd love to hear it. And if this video helped you out and maybe put a new game on your radar, all you gotta do to help us out is click the like button. Thank you. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.